Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog. Keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Both free sites. Today is February the 15th, 2021. You know, I've always believed that it's when underdogs in society stop feeling empathy for one another that society deteriorates. The purpose of this video is to give my highest rating, to give my strongest endorsement possible to the HBO series The Lady and the Dale. It's based on the true life of Geraldine Elizabeth Carmichael, who went by the name Liz Carmichael. She was a transgender woman who founded a car company in the 1970s. Her stated goal was to take on the bigs, right? Ford, GM, Chrysler. Now the car company had problems. That's why it's here in my crime set of videos here on YouTube. Among the problems were misrepresentations made by Carmichael about her past. The taking of deposits from consumers after being forbidden to do so by the state of California. And the possible existence, the likely existence, of silent investors including perhaps members of organized crime. But there is more to the story. Much of the story takes place in the 1970s. The documentary shows you the bias, and it's obvious, against transgender individuals, regardless of what they do. So, let's be clear here. Ms. Carmichael is transgender. She has had surgery to remove her testicles. Nonetheless, it's the 1970s. She has to fight for her right to be called a woman in court. She wins that fight. The judge rules that Ms. Carmichael be referred to as a woman and be called the proper pronouns for a woman, like she, right, her. Now, why would any of the witnesses care? Fraud is fraud. The events are the events. If you witness fraudulent events, what does it matter? whether the woman, excuse me, whether the person involved was male or female. But we're in the real world, and it does matter to some, doesn't it? And that's where you see the bias. It's striking in this documentary. So, journalist Dick Carlson, who was big on KABC, in Southern California in the early to mid 1970s who would go on to win Peabody Awards, very prestigious journalistic awards, is on the documentary. Keep in mind, Carlson, Tucker's dad, would go on to become part of the Reagan administration. Now, he talks about his time on the stand in the documentary. He had investigated Liz Carmichael. He came across some information that he turned over to law authorities. So he's on the stand. And despite the judge telling him to call Liz Carmichael she and her, he refuses at times. He tells you that himself on the show. It's striking. Because Dick Carlson's parents were young teens who gave him up for adoption. It's because his 15-year-old mother 
tried to hide her pregnancy and starved herself, that he was born with physical ailments, rickets, other physical problems. He is an underdog. His teenage parents gave him up for adoption. He did not graduate from college. Dick Carlson really, for the most part, is self-made, right? He put together his own journalistic career and beat the odds. But yet, he shows such little empathy for entrepreneur Liz Carmichael's sexual identity, and she's also self-made, that Carlson disregards the court order to call Ms. Carmichael her and she. Such were the 1970s. The key with this HBO series isn't just the main characters, Ms. Carmichael, members of her family, but it's the people around them the bias that should have the viewer wondering why there's bias at all. Why there's so little empathy for her. Right? After all, she's an entrepreneur. She's employing many people. She has a dream. She's trying to bring a desirable product to market. It's, it's simply astonishing that because she is transgender, there's such little empathy for her. I give this show my highest rating. It's very mature theme subject matter, but I do believe that this is the kind of show where if you have an older teenager you want to sit down with them and watch the show to show them what it was like in the 1970s. Right, folks? I believe this documentary is far more jarring than intended. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video, and I also hope you take the time to research The Lady and the Dale on HBO. I'm giving it my highest rating. Thanks for stopping by.